Like many women today juggling career, home and family, they feel that something is missing. By spending time in societies where female roles are very different, they hope to find answers that could change their lives. Thirty-six-year-old Jackie Davis is traveling almost 6,000 miles to the remote mountains of northern Thailand to live with the Karen people. The Karen are the country's largest hill tribe and originally migrated to Thailand from Burma, many to escape persecution and conflict. Over 320,000 have now settled in small villages dotted throughout the mountains eking out a living as subsistence farmers, leading simple, peaceful lives with few material possessions. Back home, Jackie lives in Bristol with her two children, Azaria, who's five, and JJ, who's three. Until four years ago, Jackie worked as a solicitor. It was gonna be this awesome job, this awesome career, this awesome path. When I qualified, what I realized very quickly was that actually it was a factory I was working in. Things in my personal life were crumbling, things like a marriage breakdown. I was not happy at work for the longest period of time. I just hated my life. And so it was just at that point where I just had to say, you know, something has got to give. Jackie quit her legal career and started work on community projects. Not long after, her husband left. Maybe I've made life harder for my kids by not being married or for them not having a father around. I'm frustrated by that, yeah, probably. I'm disappointed for them. Next time when you think about getting up there, you're going to think about how you're going to get down. It's like, it's just stress to me, because I'm trying to think, but you've been sitting there thinking for ages, Azaria, and you haven't moved. One of my greatest sins is that I take out... Yeah, but I'm not this man. Hold on a minute. JJ, just have a bit of respect. You understand? Please. No. One of my greatest sins is that I take out my frustration on my children. I take it out on those that are closest to me, and those that are closest to me are my children. And it's, I, I think I treat my children harder than I treat anybody else in the world. Every parent wants the best for their child, and what I know for certain is that my children are not getting the best out of me. I need to change my life so I can change my relationship with them and so that they can have the best possible input from me and that's what they're not getting at the moment because of the frustration which I can't quite put my hand on. I want my world to actually stop for a moment because it just seems to be spiraling into craziness and I all oh, out of control. Jackie will spend almost a month with the Karen. 20 miles from the Burmese border, in the Thai village of Hue Bong. It's a six hour windy road trip from Thailand's backpacker capital, Chiang Mai, a thousand meters up in the mountain terraces. Thank you. The village women gather to meet the new tribal wife. Hello. Oh, thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> it's the start of the rainy season. And at this time of the year, many of the village men are away planting rice in their fields, sometimes up to a day's walk away. Nice to meet you all. I'm not frightening, honestly. Swadi hi. Swadi hi. Hello. For the next few weeks, Jackie will live with 42-year-old Gay Hui Sam. Is there somewhere I can put my bag? Please. It's very heavy. Thank you. Thank you. Gay? Gay? 
Oh, my name is Jackie. Jackie. While her husband's away planting, Gay runs an all-female household, including nine-month-old granddaughter Yani, 20-year-old daughter Wee, and grandmother Pipi. So, is this your mother? Mm. Good morning. <laughs> uh, sorry. Nice to meet you. Suwadi uh, hi. In my community, the older people are very much respected because you have a lot of wisdom and say, I hope that you will share some of that with me. Thank you. If my host family don't mind me deserting them on the first night, I'm happy to stay with you. Thank you. Oh, my grandmother, yeah. you know, it's like, wow. Karen women are renowned for their weaving, and the village women have made an outfit for Jackie. No giant at five feet two and a half, Jackie's still one of the tallest women in the village. It looks sweet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jackie will make her home in the granny annex with Pipi, next door to the family's main house. Pipi, do you think you've got enough blankets for me to share? Can I ask you how old you are? How do they get money in the village? The Karen women love to sing, and peepees in luck. For oh, he loved me. <laughs> Committed Christian Jackie loves to sing gospel. I'm so unworthy. <laughs> yeah, he loved me. Now it's your turn. When he sings. <laughs> <laughs> Good English. <laughs> what do you think? Your turn, P. <laughs> to formally welcome Jackie into the community, Pipi and Gay lead her to the headman's house. The Karen and Wei Bong have now converted to Thailand's national religion of Buddhism. <laughs> but they also maintain their old ways. And today's welcome ceremony will center on their traditional beliefs in the spirit world. The headman taps the bowl of food to entice the spirits of the land, water and forest, asking them to take care of the new arrival. Each of the villagers ties a piece of cotton dipped in the sacred food around Jackie's wrist and gives her their blessing. ในเมลินิบาเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเดวอนเ
and people keep wanting to bless you. It's great and everything, but you're still hungry. So my belly was rumbling and my belly was sinking, but the food's gonna get cold and I like my food hot, but the food was delicious. Jackie's barely touched down and already it seems she's made quite an impression on Gay and Pee Pee. During Jackie's stay, she'll be expected to live and work as a tribal wife. At this time of year, the village women fish several times a week to supplement their staple diet of rice. While the men fish with spears, the women use nets and build small dams to trap the fish. The sap from the vine branches stuns the fish, slowing them down. They must then grasp their catch, quite a challenge as the fish take cover in the mud. I'm going to hold it, but it just, but it's going to slip. Right, all right. Fish. And now, actually, I, before I was saying it was a big fish, now I don't mind if it's like that. <laughs> it's not, this is not a real catch. This is, yeah, see. Oh. <laughs> I'll have the fish, one of you can have that one, right? Gay's neighbours are curious about Jackie. Two. He divorced me. First, I was very sad when I got divorced because I think that marriage should be for life. But and I wouldn't have divorced him because of what I believe. But I, you know, he divorced me, so I guess I just signed the papers, and I have. I thanked him ever since. I've said thank you because we weren't suited. No, I haven't found anybody since I've been divorced, but, you know, I hope I'm a bit more successful than I am with fishing. home, Gay's keen to find out more about her single visitor. Marriage is sacred for the Karen. They believe that it guarantees them a place in the afterlife, so divorce is extremely rare. Do I have a boyfriend? Am I courting? No, I'm not. Yes, if you agree, then you get married. I'm just wondering if you could tell me how you and your husband got together. Um, do people get divorced in your community? Mm -hmm. Oh, she misses her husband. I came here with an open heart, and it seems to me as if that's been received well by my host family and by other members of this community. I feel that there are people here that really want to talk and, and just, you know, curious about who I am, curious about where I'm from, curious about um, my children, my family, my, my story, um, but also are really open and willing to share their story.
It's 4.30 a.m. and Gay's already up, preparing rice for the day's meals. With so much work to do in the village, women rise before sunrise every day. <laughs> After a lifetime of dawn starts, Pipi is now entitled to lie in, unlike the new tribal wife. So why did you get up so early, gang? This is every day, like even Sunday. Tending Gay's animals will be part of Jackie's daily routine. 22 chickens and a pig. Or you clean the pig poo into the box. How does the pig poo get into the bowl? That's really clever, a potty trained pig. <laughs> you know, I think it's quite <laughs> Very clever. the tough husks from the grain is another regular chore for the women here. And today, Jackie is on duty with Gay's daughter, Wee. I think that they get up, for, some get up at 4.30 in the morning, and it's the way they start their day, you know, with a high energy workout. It's commendable. He's going for a, a run around the park. Another new experience for Jackie, answering the call of nature. I really want to do the number two, but the bathroom's engaged and someone's having a wash, which is fair enough. The Karen's answer to toilet paper is sticks. But exactly how to use them is a mystery. Right. Okay. I want to do a... <laughs> I want to do a shit. Alright, look. Okay, 
Oh, the kakwai. Yeah, the good stuff. Kakwai. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I eat chana na eat chicken kakwai. Bella la kiko. Excuse me. And I think there must be an art to getting your ass in the bum clean with a stick, which I haven't mastered. The early start has taken its toll, and after just a few hours, Jackie goes back to bed. Well rested, Jackie heads off into the mountains with Gay. It's the height of the planting season and young crops are a tasty treat for vermin. Traps have been set and Gay checks them regularly. Traditionally, the Karen must slash and burn farmers, clearing rainforest to farm, moving on in seven year cycles. I have to say not today. In the 1960s, the king offered the tribe squatters' rights to encourage them to settle and give up their old practices. Now most families have two or three acres to farm sustainably. While Gay's husband is planting their distant fields, she looks after those closer to home. I'm uh, looking forward to it. I've never been to look for any animals other than at the zoo, so this will be great. What's deemed close in Hue Bong, however, is still an hour and a half's walk away. Finally, they reach the field. I'm just going to give myself a minute's rest. Yay! She loves the I never thought I'd hold a rat. I did it. And you hold the rat without it being a problem. And you hold the rat like it's your friend. Oh Lord. We won't eat the rat! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, come, let's have dinner because I'm hungry. Not a boon. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to take the rat and I'll you show me what to do and we'll do it together. No cow boy. I've always desired to hold a rat. And it's a dead animal, pass me the rat. Mm. Thank you, let's go. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think my reaction to holding it was a bit exaggerated because the whole point of me being here is to live like the Karen people live, but um, I'm really hungry and I don't fancy rat, but that's what's on the menu. So I'm gonna go and cook me a rat. Back home, Jackie seems to have lost her appetite. Which is the best bit of the rat? <laughs> no, never. 
If Gay eats some of the rat, then I'll try the rat. I've heard that it tastes really delicious, actually. The rat is seasoned with turmeric, garlic and herbs and baked in banana leaves. I'm just going to say a prayer, it doesn't matter who's me. Right, Father, we just thank you that you say all food is fitting to eat, save that it's not blessed to another, Lord. So um, just bless this food, Father God, to our stomachs and bless the hands that prepared it. Amen. Thanks and praise. Huh? Well, it's a bit salty. Pretty inoffensive, apart from the fact it is rat. PP offers Jackie a massage to soothe her Western muscles. You're a masseur, amen. Thank you. <laughs> oh. This is the only place ever in my whole life that I've never felt different because of my color, the colour of my skin. And that is so interesting to me, because even in England, training as a solicitor, you know, I always had it in the back of my head, um, you know, you're the only black person doing this course, you're the only black person amongst these, you know, group of people. Your parents will say to you, you know, you, that, um, you have to work twice as hard as everybody else forget to the same place but <clears throat> not having to think about being black <laughs> is brilliant because it's a freedom in my thought it allows a lot of more free thought um, within me you know and hopefully that will allow me to kind of meditate more deeply on the things that are really really important that I've come here to address. Today is the Buddhist day of worship, one prayer. The villagers take a break from the fields, but there are still household chores to contend with. It's half four, <laughs> and whether she likes it or not, it's time for Jackie to get up. Yeah. <laughs> After her slow start, Jackie takes the reins with the morning's preparations. She's just used to doing is she gets up in the morning and you know she just does her thing. So you know, I'm pretty confident that I can 
work out how much right, but it's cool, you know what I mean? She's just used to doing. Man, I'm in It's a shaky start. The whole day's rice is in the pot. It's all all right. You stay. You stay. Oh, it's a Finally, breakfast is served. I get very angry with my children sometimes because they refuse to eat what I give them. Sometimes. They're very naughty. But not very often. I often shout at them, though. I more tend to shout at them. <laughs> The villagers congregate at the Buddhist temple. Huaibong doesn't have its own monk, so maintaining the temple is the villagers' responsibility. But my experience in churches at home, it tends to be the same old few people who take responsibility for cleaning the church. So it's great that everyone's, you know, taking a hand and taking responsibility for uh, their place of worship. And it tends to be the women who are doing the men's work. Got any men here? Not so different. Thank you. Jackie's a regular churchgoer, but it's her first time in a Buddhist temple. I probably won't bow if that's all right, if that's not too rude. Is that all right if I don't bow? About that? Yeah, but I'm happy to pray. Pray. I'm not bad, bad. Okay. Dear Lord, <laughs> thank you that we're here. Thank you that I'm with these people. I just pray actually that you bless my kids, Lord God, right here and now back in England. Just lift them up before you, Father. And I also thank you, Lord God, for the host family and for this community, Lord. And I just pray, Father God, your blessing over them, Lord. Amen. <laughs> There's been an arrival at Gaze. Her husband, Deng, is back home after 12 days on the mountain terraces. Under, under. <laughs> so maybe the was actually 
Loads of stuff. He hasn't come home empty-handed, and it was just—he's like, "Daddy's home. What have you got, Daddy?" Do you know what I mean? And I and I remember that looking out for my dad. He'd gone away somewhere. What have you got? And the baby was the first one to dig in the bag to find out what you bought for her. You know, that's really sweet. It's a really, really lovely sweet. Actually, in my house, I'm mother and father, isn't it? It's early morning, and Jackie has had a restless night. As I lay in bed, tossing and turning, I was thinking, why? I would have thought that I'd be able to lie down and go to sleep straight away. But alas, it was just like most of the other nights I've had here. And I suddenly clicked, actually, it's my kids, it's my children. Um, you know, I'm, I, sleep, I don't sleep with my kids, but... Actually, that's when I'm really, really, really quiet and really still, is when my kids are with me. I had the, you know, I shed kind of a few tears yesterday, and I, my, and I just thought, oh, don't cry, you know, and don't start crying. So, kind of, you know, I was kind of holding my my head back like that to keep the tears inside. Um, but yeah, I really miss my children. Today, Jackie's going on her longest trek yet. Gay is taking her to help plant her cousin's paddy field in the village of Mayu Kaluan, a two and a half hour walk away. I'm not sure how far we're walking today, but the journey is what it is. So I'll just keep walking. An hour and a half later, and Jackie's feeling the strain. Yeah, Gates told me it's... <sighs> She's got very warm hands, really warm. Eventually they reach their destination, and it's time for the real work to begin. The local villagers have been in the paddy field since early morning. During planting season, it's customary to help out in each other's fields, often working up to nine hours a day, ankle deep in the mud. It's back-breaking work, in the intense humidity. Is this okay? Are you a good teacher? <laughs> Gay takes Jackie on a courtesy call to meet her cousin who owns the field. For 12 years, Apur has been raising her grandchildren after their mother died. Their father was allowed to remarry once his children gave him their blessing. So does the father provide for them at all? Does he give you money or um, rice? 
chỉ là lát lô chiều đó cái hết là bây giờ lô đồ chiều đó hết là bây giờ tôi cái chỉ được mấy mấy cái gì vậy em hay em vậy nè you see in England um, some fathers have money but they choose not to give it to their children and they have time and they choose not to give it to their children but you're saying what I understand is that the father would love to help financially his children but he's not in a position <coughs> My son is three, and my daughter is five and a half. No, I'm divorced. After a worker's lunch, Jackie is expected back at the rice field. But she feels unwell and doesn't return. Instead, she asks Gay to take her back to Hui Bon. I, I just, I wanted to leave, basically. I, I just got overwhelmed. And I just felt overwhelmed and I know myself. So, you know, when I know myself and myself says, you feel overwhelmed, go, I go. <laughs> So it was really that simple, you know. I had a really beautiful day, and that, and I hope that that was explained to the people who hosted us and fed us and stuff. But I just, just sort of know myself, and I just at that moment, you know, then. ended up at Gay's cousin's house. And she said a few important things, actually. I, I'm just gonna say kind of what's in my heart, really, is I think it's sad. I, I do often feel sorry for my children. Um, and it's not a sorry in terms of I pity them. But I, I think that children are best raised in a two-parent family, you know? And I just think that's... I, 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 I feel sorry that that's the situation, that's the story of their life, and in fact, it's a generational thing because I was raised in a single-parent family. And in fact, my mum was raised in a single-parent family. And it's like, that needs to be broken. You know, I don't want that to pass on to my daughter or my son, that their children are raised in a single-parent family. Because um, I just think that children deserve the best. And that's, you know, me saying when I look in the mirror and I say, oh, actually, I feel like I really... Today, Gay decides they'll stay at home rather than return to the rice field. There's so much beauty here and, you know, I love family, I love community and I can look and see how they do it. We talk about family and wanting to support family and encourage families, but look at the broken society in which I live. I'm a single parent. You know, in fact, I'm surrounded in my community by single parents. The way that they live here is, like I say, everybody under one roof. I'm often pushing my children away. I turn into a different person after seven o'clock at night with my children. And it's basically, if you're not asleep, you know, it's really irritating to me because I want my time, you know? Um, I've been with you all day, I'll say to them, you know, come on, I, it's selfish for you not to sleep you know, and allow me to do what I need to do because my day's not finished, I've still got to wash, clean, cook, whatever I need to do. And it's so different here. It's such a different attitude.
you do have really beautiful children and they all seem, you know, really well mannered, um, considerate, really, really lovely. Because I struggle, I really struggle sometimes. Do you have any tips for, you know, for being a parent? Gay kind of nipped it in the bud, and she just said, oh my God, grow up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? All right, thank you, Gay. I like things, I love simple truths. Grow up. And I've, I've been living in part as if it's been a chore, as if it's been a hardship, you know, and woe is me, and going on about being a single parent. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, if I'm supposed to be content in all things, well, I'm supposed to be content with, the, you know, the fact that I am the main carer for my children. So, you know, get over it, Jack. It's Jackie's final week, and there's a wedding in Weibong. The headman's 17-year-old granddaughter, Naiki, is getting married. And to celebrate, every family in the village is charged with making a draft of the local tipple, rice whiskey. I do drink, but I don't drink very often. And there's, you know, an opportunity to drink. I haven't uh, drank since I've come here apart from the blessing ceremony. So there's an opportunity to drink whiskey today, and I'm just hoping that I contain myself, you know? <laughs> Friends and family from across the mountains converge on Hui Bong, while Jackie calms the bride's nerves. So have you been boyfriend and girlfriend for three years, or...? Can I get a care? What, what changed? In England, the groom is supposed to ask the father of the bride's permission to get married. Do you have anything like that? When do you get to kiss your husband? <laughs> <laughs> the whole community helps with the preparations. I just like the fact that everybody pulls together to make the wedding happen. People are sifting rice, different people are cutting up meat. It's not like you've had to buy in waiters and waitresses, you know, and pay people to serve you. They will serve each other, and I love that. You know, it's a beautiful atmosphere. The bride patiently awaits the groom's arrival from his home in a neighbouring village. Um, it's really exciting. I mean, there's lots of new people here in the village because of the wedding. There's some really beautiful outfits as well. And there are some big girls in the house. The groom, 20-year-old Sambun, has arrived. However, he must wait outside the village boundary until he's invited to enter. The headman calls down the spirits to ask their permission and also their blessing over the union. The rice whiskey is passed around as an offering to the spirits. <laughs> Everyone is in high spirits as Sombun is led into the village by his father.
The ceremony takes place in the bride's parents' house, where the couple will live. It's usual for Karen husbands to move in with their wife's parents until they have children and can afford to build their own houses. Karen wives must weave their groom a new shirt for the wedding. <laughs> The tying of the couple's wrists by the villagers symbolizes their acceptance of Sambun. But Gay's husband, Deng, is feeling the effects of an early tipple. Finally, the whiskey and the blessings flow again. <laughs> It's a very busy affair, but it's not a larry affair with the booze, you know, the, and to me, for me anyway, the booze have bought humour. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Do you know what? I love gay immensely, and one of the things that I th about our relationship is we're not that different in age, but I actually think she's so much more mature than me. She's 42 and I'm 36, you know, and, and you know, normally you just drink, but I just respect whatever she says. And so gay is saying, you know, don't drink, don't drink too much, I'll let you have, you know, I'll even I'll let you have some, but she's just kind of, just be guarded about yourself, and it's wise advice at the end of the day, because I know I like that drink as much as I like Jamaican white rum, you know, that's my my one drink, and this now is my two drink, you know. Probably like once at Christmas, <laughs> and then that was the last time I was drunk. <laughs> at Karen celebrations, it's traditional for the men and women to socialise separately. <laughs> I'll sing whatever you want me to sing for a glass of whiskey. <laughs> I love them, you know, um, they're beautiful people and they've received me um, with open hearts and they've cared for me and they've, you know, just allowed me to be present with them. And it's the last night. I've had an amazing day with Nike's wedding. And I, what I found so amazing is that I just feel I've been part of it, you know, as if perhaps I was one of them. After nearly a month away from home, it's time for Jackie to leave Hui Do you think you need two people to, uh, to boil the pot of rice? Another guy apart. When I came here, I knew I was in the right place. The way the people welcomed me, the way they received me, every day. I'm, I'm having, you know, new revelations, if you like, new ways of thinking about how I should live. And actually, it's all, it's already I know 
I've already known these things, but I've struggled against it because I still live in it. I mean, and you know what? Actually, it's even going to be really because actually I stand here and I'm really like, yeah, I'm going for it. I'm going to do it my way. But when I go back to Bristol, hey, I'm back in the same society. So how's it really going to work in practice? You know, but I'm confident that I'm not going to be the same person. And I'm confident that, you know, as I leave here, you know, I leave, leave behind things that just no longer need to, to sort of worry me, you know, bear me down. Um, confuse me and or you know impact my relationship with my kids actually thank you very much yeah remember to clap yeah 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 no se me dijo ni que era lo que yo I would say I came here hopeful in the sense of I really believe something had to change, you know, and I'm leaving with hope over brimming. And I felt nothing but love from them. They consider themselves to be poor, and in fact, they are amongst the richest people I have ever met. Coming up next tonight, all the sights and sounds of Glastonbury without any of the smells. Experience the best of the festival in your living room next. And then at half past ten, Coldplay pay a visit to the BBC. Music